everyone welcome to club ux in this interaction design series today we are discussing about the 10 interaction design principles if you are starting out into the design world then it's extremely important for you to understand what are these interaction design principles we already have multiple videos we are talking in detail about interaction design do check out the videos the link is in the description box okay so interaction design is all about creating the conversation between the user and the products just think about an ATM machine. When you visit the ATM machine, your goal is to get money from it. Now, there are three ways by which you can interact with the machine. Number one is maybe with the help of some voice command. Number two, by using their touchpad. And number three, with the help of the touchscreen. Interaction design is all about, first of all, deciding which one would be the most optimal way of creating the interaction between the user and the product, whether through voice command, through touchpad or through touchscreen. We have already discussed what is interaction design. We have discussed it with the help of example. Refer to that video if you want to learn more. Okay, let's go back and understand what are the 10 major principles of interaction design. Number one is consistency. So over the years, users have become familiar to certain design elements by interacting with the products and interfaces. So it's very important that the design should be consistent. Consistency is achieved by keeping design elements uniform throughout by making sure that they look and behave in the same way. A consistent design makes it easier for user to learn the interface and also reduces the probability of misusing the interface. Number two is minimalism. Design should be simple. Avoid any blingy or unnecessary elements. Just think about the interface of Google Flights or Alexa. All the important options which is required for the user to perform their task is available. While the design is simple, clear and concise, everything that a user needs is there and yet it is simple to understand. Next is discoverability. All objects necessary for the successful human computer interaction should be visible and accessible at all the time. Think about the interface of Gmail. All the important options that you use Gmail for inbox send email compose email is always there on the screen you don't have to find it it's always there if you can't find it that means the option doesn't exist next is learnability interaction should be easy to learn and remember for the user without facing issues to use it again just think about apple it has got the most easy interface to learn by the user once you use an apple iphone you won't go back Number five is conceptual and mental models. They are extremely important in order to make a design discoverable and easier to understand. Mental model is an explanation of someone's thought process about how something works in the real world. Mental model differs from person to person. It is based on how the person has interacted with the world and users base their predictions about how an interface would work based on their mental models. Conceptual model is a representation of a system that uses concepts and ideas to form said representation. Number six is feedback. For every action that the user takes, the design should give a meaningful reaction. Think about the interface of Gmail. Whenever you send your email, you always get a feedback that your email has been successfully sent. Or just think about submitting a form online. You always get the feedback in return that yes, the submission is successful. Just think, what if you don't get these kind of feedback? It would create a bad taste in the mouth. Next is mapping. In design, mapping is a relationship between two set of things. Basically, it represents which control is connected to what action on the product. Think about your car. When you steer your wheel into the right direction, it moves right. When you steer your wheel into the left direction, it moves left. Or just think about any UI design element, for example, scroller, scroll bar. When you move it up, the screen moves up. When you move the scroll bar down, it moves down. Visual hierarchy. It refers to arranging and presenting the design elements in an order that allows users to understand information easily. You can easily influence the perception of user by making use of various visual characteristics. For example, with the help of using color contrast. If you want your user to put their attention on a particular information, then you can highlight it with the help of certain colors. Or you can also do it with the help of various font sizes. 
think about using headers subheaders and paragraphs if you want your user to put their attention on a particular information then you would always use a bigger font size this is an example of visual hierarchy then comes affordances and signifiers affordance is a term used to refer to attributes of an object which shows user the action they can take signifier refers to any indicator that communicates what affordances objects have we already have a separate video where we have discussed in detail about affordances and signifiers we have understood it with the help of example constraints it is about determining ways of restricting the possibilities of user interaction to make sure that only specific things are visible to user you cannot provide endless possibilities to user they might get confused they will get confused so you have to add constraints into the interface so as to guide the user into a particular direction so guys in this video we discussed about the 10 major interaction design principles i hope it is clear to you now do check out our some of the other videos where we are discussing in detail about interaction design i have added link into the description box Do make sure that you check out our website yukti.io where we have discussed in detail about interaction design and make sure that you subscribe to our channel for more videos on UX UI interaction design and UX research